In this video, I want to talk about how to eliminate distracting shifts in your writing. And all the information I'm going to talk about is going to come from your Rules for Writers textbook, pages 128 to 133. So if you want to follow along there, you can do that as well. Um, so when we talk about eliminating uh, shifts in writing, what we mean is that we want to be as consistent as possible throughout our writing. And we want to maintain consistency in three different areas. The first area we want to think about maintaining consistency is in point of view. And point of view should match in something called person and number. The next place we want to make sure we maintain consistency is in verb tense. And the third place we want to make sure that we maintain some consistency is in mood or voice. Now, when I say the word consistency, what, that word loosely translates to mean stays the same. And so when we make some choices in writing, we want to make sure that the form that we choose initially matches or stays the same throughout. Now, I'm going to break this video up into three different pieces. I'm going to start just by talking about point of view. And then in two following videos, we'll talk about verb tense and then mood or voice. So when we talk about point of view, there are three points of view in writing. You have first person, which includes the writer as directly the speaker talking about their individual experience. Second person, which is a direct address to someone else. It's when you're speaking, the writer is speaking directly to another person. And third person is when the writing or the action in the writing is about somebody else. The writer is not involved at all. They're not talking about themselves and they're not talking directly to someone, but they're talking about someone else that is involved in the action and they themselves are not. Now, when we think about person, a uh, person has to, as I said, agree in, um, point of view has to agree both in person and in number. And so when we say number, what that means is singular, is there one point of view? Or plural, is there more than one um, noun or individual that is part of that point of view. So we break this down. The first person point of view, we usually use the, we use the pronouns I, me, or my in order to indicate that point of view. The word I is a pronoun that is a subjective pronoun. What that means is that I is used when the first person noun, or the first person noun is a subject, meaning the first person noun is doing the action, right? I drank a Red Bull. Me is a first person objective pronoun. We use me when the noun is the object of the sentence or when the noun is receiving the action. I picked up the phone. Um, I again is the subject, but if I were to say, someone handed the phone to me, in that case, I'm receiving the action, and me is the objective pronoun. Finally, the last one, my or mine, those are possessive pronouns, they show ownership, so the phone is mine, or it is my phone, the keys are mine, or they are my keys, and those show possession or ownership. Now, of course, the same thing is true for the plural verb, we is a subjective verb, our is an objective verb, and ours is possessive. It shows ownership. So the point here is that in order to avoid distracting shifts, we need to make sure that if we begin in first person singular, we always stay in first person singular. If we stay, if we begin in first person plural, we stay in first person plural. And what sometimes happens is that we may begin in first person and accidentally shift to second person. Or we may begin in third person singular, and we may accidentally shift into third person plural. And these are common mistakes that people make. And in the next couple of slides, I'm going to give you some examples uh, that show you. The last thing I want to say about pronouns in general before we move on to look at some examples is that different points of view are used in different kinds of writing. So for instance, your first piece of writing for this class and for English 101 is a narrative essay. Narrative essays are most often written in first person because you are reporting back your own experience. Second person is oftentimes used for directions if you are trying to explain to someone directly how to do something. 
you're going to use second person. And third person is most often used for academic writing. So when we get into our argumentative writing and we get into some of our expository writing, we're going to move away from first person. We're going to stick to third person. That's that more academic voice. All right, so let's get into some examples. If you take a look at the example on the top of the screen, our class practiced rescuing a victim trapped in a wrecked car. We learned to dismantle the car with the essential tools. You were graded on your speed and your skill in freeing the victim. Now, this is a mistake that students make all the time. What we've done is we began in first person plural, our class. That's a first person plural possessive pronoun. And then again, we, a plural first person pronoun. And then accidentally, the writer shifts into second person by using you, your, and your. And in order to correct that, we want to replace those pronouns with first person plural pronouns so that they match throughout. And as you see on the screen in front of you, the corrected sentence is, we were graded on our speed in our skill in freeing the victim. That would be a correct revision. Let's look at another example. The original sentence reads, one needs a password and a credit card number to access the database you will be billed at an hourly rate. Now this one can go in two different directions. The word one is what we refer to as an indefinite pronoun. It's a pronoun that can refer really to anybody and it is a third person pronoun. Um, the word indefinite means that it's just not specific to one person in particular. So the textbook is telling us that you is a more appropriate choice because this is giving directions and that's true. Um, so one way we can revise this is we can say, you need a password and a credit card to access the database. You will be billed at an hourly rate. If we wanted to create a more academic sounding voice, we can keep the indefinite pronoun. One needs a password and a credit card number to access the database. But then we would need to change that you to something else. So maybe we would repeat the word one again, right? Or we can say a person. Uh, one needs a password and a credit card number to access the database. One will be billed at an hourly rate, or a person will be billed at an hourly rate. You can see it sounds a little bit clunky, so probably the you voice or the second person voice is a better choice in this example. It's a little more direct. But this is what we mean when we say making sure that when we're writing, that we have consistent pronouns throughout and that we're avoiding accidentally shifting from one pronoun to the next. Um, in the quiz this week, you're gonna be asked to practice some examples. The examples come from the textbook, so if you wanna review the textbook again, um, you'll, see, you'll see the information that is here. And check out the coming videos that will talk about uh, verb tense and also mood. Thanks.